my YouTube feed, and I'm sure your YouTube feed as well, is exploding with videos about Adobe's new Generative AI Remove. This on the surface sounds like the bee's knees. It sounds very, very attractive because the reality is, is there's a lot of images that you take that need some work. And in the past, I've had to bring that image into Photoshop and then work on it in there, as I'm sure you have as well. So this promise of generative AI remove built right into Lightroom sounds amazing on the surface. What I wanna do is actually test it out with a couple of images. Today in this video, I'm going to pull up some example photos of pictures that I've taken, not recently actually, some of these were taken like three, four, five years ago even. We're gonna just see how well this generative AI works within Lightroom. In addition to that, we're gonna talk about something that I haven't seen any other channel talk about regarding this generative AI feature and what Adobe plans to do with it. For some people, not all people. All right, let's jump into it. This is a picture of my daughter, Katie, and this was taken back in 2019, so March of 2019. Okay, so you can see in the image, I've got these uh, snow guns. You know, this is for snow making equipment, and I'd love to get rid of these snow guns and then this associated hardware with it as well. So maybe this will work. So I'm gonna head over to the develop module. I think it's under here, under the eraser. And you can see I've downloaded the most recent version of Lightroom. You do have to do that into your under your uh, Creative Cloud um, module there. And I can do Generative AI and then Object Aware. So I want both of those turned on for sure. So let's go ahead and select, make this a little larger. And just make this here. This should be a pretty easy one. Um, no object detected. <laughs> okay, so literally just tried my first, uh, you know, go at this, and the first thing that comes up is that there's no object detected. Now, look at that screen. Does that look like an object to you? It certainly does to me. Um, maybe let me turn off object aware. I don't know. And try that again. Oh, uh, the promise of technology. All right, that's good. Let me get rid of this. This is another piece of snowmaking equipment. This is obviously the liquid that's used to power it and then there. Okay, so that looks like I've got everything selected. Let's hit apply and see what happens. Taking a few seconds here, more than a few seconds. Come on. Okay, so let's see how it did. I'm going to go to 100% here. Oops, let me do that, control C. Oh, I had to redo, redo, redo. Oh, there was no redo. Okay, so we're learning as we go here. Let me do that again. So now I know when you, after you have done whatever this is, you know, after you've selected your object, make sure you hit uh, close out of that panel and then start moving around. That was my fault. Let me close out of this and voila. So that did an excellent job. You can still see a little bit here in the sky. This little dot, that's still there. And this, I'm not quite sure what it tried to do. It almost looks like a, a really weak pine tree in the distance, but that's not distracting. But let me see if I can clean those two, two things up again using that eraser tool. I'm gonna click on that and this thing, whatever that is. Hit apply. Okay, let me close out of this. And we are good. This looks fantastic. Look at that. Now, in order to do that in the past in Photoshop, it took me like forever and I didn't get nearly as good result as I've gotten here. So if we're keeping score, we are one for three using this generative AI remove tool. I think that looks fantastic. There's no artifacts in here, maybe a little bit right here. That just might be, actually it's on my screen, <laughs> not, on the, uh, uh, not on the picture itself, but that looks great. All right, let's move on to the next one. I think this one is going to be much more challenging and what I'm trying to do, I love this picture. If you have never been to the TWA hotel, 
in New York. It's uh, attached to JFK. It's one of the terminals in JFK. It's attached to one of the terminals at JFK Airport. Um, this is like, I've traveled a lot all over the world, and this is like top five in terms of cool places to visit. But I digress. So let's take a look at these vehicles in the background, which are a distraction. You know, this this is otherwise, I think, a pretty decent scene. But these pick these cars in the background have always driven me nuts. To do this in Photoshop would have taken forever, so I just kind of gave up on it. I did try it, but it was like, oh, this is just not coming out the way that I was hoping to do that it would turn out. So let's try generative AI and see what it can do. Now, mind you, I have not tested this on this photo, so we are going to watch the results. You know, we're going to see these results together for the first time. So let me just get these cars out of here. That's good. And maybe just this one car. That's actually a really cool classic car that they have down there. And this car over here, got to go. And that is about it. All right, cool. So let me, you know what? I don't mind these um, shrubs here. So let me hit subtract, tighten up my... Um, my little selector tool here and get rid of all that. There we go. Okay, so that stays and this stays too, obviously. Okay, that looks good enough. Let me hit apply and see what happens. Okay, so I'm not quite sure <laughs> what it did. Let's close out of this real quick and just kind of zoom in. I I don't know what this is. Are these like RVs that are put in here? Are these houses? These look like, I don't know, like a almost like a busy, a very tight city, almost like a tent city. It's really strange. Over here, it cleaned up nicely where the truck was. And over here, I'm not quite sure what it did. The car is gone, but I don't know what this thing is. That's that's more. That's almost more of a distraction. So let me go back to this eraser, and then try the other one. Okay. So this is interesting. So so since I closed out of that, it must have thought that that was the one that I wanted. So now I'm going to have to run it again in order to. Somehow, here, I'll hit Control Z. Edit, redo. Edit, redo. Okay, so, so this is frustrating. So the, I've already done one pass of this and it doesn't look like it's actually saved that mask unless I'm missing it somewhere. Is it possible? Yeah, I guess anything's possible, but, but there is, there's no way to see that mask that I've had that I just had on there. Uh, so that means I'm going to have to redraw that mask at least on those areas again. So I guess let's do it. Okay, so that is even worse. Let me click on some variations. I'm not even sure what's going on there. Uh, well, that one's not terrible. But it looks super fake. And then down here, I'm not quite sure what's going on down here. But whatever. Let's close out of this and zoom in a little bit. Uh, I, again, I don't know what's going on here. This definitely looks really funky, and it's got, I don't know what this is. This is like a, almost looks like a stand-up vacuum cleaner, if you've ever seen those at a car wash or something like that. The bushes look good, though, and then the, the tree in the background, but these things look weird. You got wires over here. I don't know. And then this, again, I don't know what's going on over here. And this up here looks strange, too. I don't know what's going on up here. Uh, so this was, I would consider this a fail. So let's 
if we're keeping score, this is now one out of two, so we're at 50%. All right, let's move on to our final image. And this is one that I took. Uh, this is like a trip down to New Jersey, down in, I want to say Atlantic City. No, we weren't. No, um, I, don't know, I forgot the name of the town, but uh, anyways, it was just a, a nice winter day. And it happened to be like pretty warm, it was like maybe 40 degrees, which for. Anyone who lives in the Northeast, you know, during the wintertime, four degrees is like balmy. <laughs> so this is taking over the Christmas break. And I really like this image. Uh, I like the composition. I love the colors. This is taken actually with my, um, I believe, my FX3, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I take it with the FX3. So if you are not using your FX3 for stills photography, shame on you, because this camera is in incredible it's like the a7s3 except a different body obviously but the, that sensor that 12 megapixel sensor gives just fantastic results for both video and stills and in the fx3 it has one of like the most pleasing mechanical shutters of any camera i've ever used again i digress let's look at this image here what is distracting to me is this trash can i don't necessarily mind having these two utility boxes over here but the trash can is definitely a distraction so let's go ahead and try and get rid of that and see if it works okay so i'm gonna make this just a little bit smaller because it is a, not necessarily a, a big item that we're trying to get out of there all right that looks good and let's just hit apply and see what it does Okay, um, decent but not great. It's obvious that it's been modified. Let me hit some other variations. No, that's not any better. That's a little bit better. So I'm just gonna hit close. And let's zoom in here so you can see what I'm looking at. In fact, I'm gonna even do 200%, which I don't normally do, but for this purpose, we're gonna do it. So it actually did a really nice job of putting in the railing and the water, but unfortunately it created this almost like hot spot where it didn't match that area, that the color of that area with the sky, which is a bummer because I think it did a really nice job. Um, other than that, let me see if I can just clone this real quick. Uh, yeah, let me try the stamp tool. And yeah, that's not working either. Yeah, unfortunately. So even though I've I've uh, it's supposed to color in this with this with whatever is over here in this and it's not doing that. It's still showing that white in there. So I don't know. I'd give this one like I wouldn't say they've necessarily failed, but it is not refined enough where I would consider using it. In fact, let me show you the edit I made in Photoshop for this particular image. Okay, so here's an example of one where I've gone in and I've manually done it within Photoshop, and you can see how much better this is compared to the one that we just had. So let's compare these two. Okay, so on the right-hand side, this is the one that I manually did in Photoshop. And you can see that that's cleaned up very, very nicely. It's it's, it's, it's good. And then over here, it, 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 this is some type of artifact of some sort. And it, it's just a hot spot. So it didn't do particularly well um, on this one. So, all right. So overall, so I would say like it got like maybe 50% of the way there on this image, but not 100% of the way there. So it's, it's definitely my overall, my general consensus here or my general thinking is that it is not ready for prime time, but like all products, this is kind of the first iteration. It will get better over time. That is the promise of AI, right? Is that it is constantly learning. So I'm sure if I try this photo out again, maybe I'll do that like six months or a year from now, try this out with this generative AI and see if it has improved to the point where you can actually use it in your photos. I think for simple stuff, it might work great, but for a little bit more complicated stuff like this, probably not the best solution. So I think they're marketing it as like the end all be all and it's gonna like trans transform everything, it's gonna be amazing and you're not gonna have to worry about your <laughs> composition or making sure that objects aren't in there that shouldn't be in there and whatever. 
my gut tells me we're very far off from that. So I, I would still take the time, get the proper proper composition, and make sure that you are paying attention to what things are in the background. So let me just um, go in here to this one and just show you one thing real quick. And this is what I alluded to at the beginning and that no one is talking about. So if you go into this, okay, and click on the eraser, gives you generative AI, and then you click on this eye, it launches the AI user guidelines. And there's nothing really in here that strikes me as like weird. But if you notice down on the bottom, it talks about commercial use and it talks about if uh, if Adobe designates in the product or elsewhere that a beta version of generative cannot be used commercially, then the generated outputs from the beta feature are for personal use and cannot be used commercially. So that is very important. And what's even more important, and this is something that I didn't realize, is that depending on the plan that you have, you get a certain number of generative AI edits every month. So if I click on here and I look at this plan, you can see that now my monthly generative credits, I have 982 credits left of 1,000, right? It says when you're running low on credits, continue generating content, no additional cost for a limited time. But this, I think, is coming to the other plans as well. So again, I don't see anybody talking about this. Like it on the surface and the way that they're talking about it, it appears to be like this limitless um, generative AI edits, but my account, and this is a corporate account, this is uh, limiting me to 1,000 generative AI edits a month, which for me is more than enough. But for some people, maybe it isn't. If you're doing like commercial work or you're doing portraits and you're using this like on every single picture and you got 50 or 100 pictures to, to edit, that's a consideration. So if you're not paying for it now, perhaps you will be in the future. So anyways, those are my thoughts on the generative AI so far being launched in Lightroom. Let me know down in the comments. Have you been using it over the past 24, 48 hours? Are you seeing some success? Do you think it's ready for prime time? Me personally, I don't. I think it's a nice tool, you know, nice to have, certainly for certain situations for like an easy fix, but for other situations that are a little bit more complex it's definitely not a replacement for going in there and doing it manually or, you know, more realistically is set, setting up the shot right the first time. So you don't have to go into this generative AI and make any changes to the image itself. Anyways, those are my thoughts. If you do like content like this, I just kindly ask that you smash the like button, maybe subscribe to the channel. We are almost at a thousand subscribers and I want to get there by my three year anniversary in September. So help me get there, people. We can do this together. Thanks for watching. Take care.